Back in 2017, I shot some of my favorite images to this day that I have ever taken. Now, for those of you who have followed the stories and followed the channel since the beginning, you'll know that these were with my friend Bradley Friesen that I shot in an ice cave. I've never been in a place like this in my life. Now, for that place to also be in Canada is very special. This story hurts even more because that ice cave isn't even there anymore. It doesn't even exist. It's melted. I shot all those photos in small JPEG. At some point throughout the day, I switched off RAW and my camera went over to small JPEG and I didn't realize and I didn't know and I shot some of the greatest landscape photos of my career in small JPEG. And I remember getting onto the plane. I usually wait till I get back to my studio to edit photos, but I could not wait. I got back on the plane. I opened my laptop up. I plugged in the hard drive. They came by to ask if I wanted anything. No, thank you. Thank you. I'm sure if I'm focused, laser focused. I open up the drive, DCIM, open the folder, start looking for them. I see the small JPEGs. I'm looking for CR2s. Where, where are the rods? Nowhere. The feeling when your whole body goes numb, like when you get pulled over by a cop and you've been speeding, and you're like, oh no, the light, are those for me? <gasps> that feeling, just you're, you're just washed. And I start looking, mouth starts getting clammy, starting to feel a little bit sick. They come by again, do you want some water? Please, yes, please. I'm looking, no CR2s anywhere, no raw files to be found. It is in that moment <laughs> that I realized I messed up big time. I didn't shoot any raws whatsoever. Now to my surprise, what is this photo here? A 1490 by 993 photo is not the worst thing that could happen. I went on from there to still use these photos and had them blown up massively for a gallery that Canon put on for me downtown Toronto. They looked great. Not a single person knew they were small JPEG. Now Luminar, who's the sponsor of this video, just put out a new update with Luminar Neo. One of the extensions that you can get is upscale. Immediately I was like, <gasps> The ice cave, five years later, I can upscale the ice cave. We're gonna use some of the new extensions that they've just come out with. So I wanna try them out, see how they are. These are a few photos that are either uh, a little bit blurry from this year and not sharp enough, a make crispier, or even in this case, upscale, five years in the making. So I've got the ice cave photo here. Uh, that's what it looks like. Again, it looks good and it works, but if I can just drag this into the extension down here at the bottom, it gives me the option of two times, four times, or six times. You better believe I'm going six times upscale. We're not just taking one pixel and stretching it as big as we can to make that resolution higher. We're physically adding pixels here. So we were at 14. <laughs> it is now 8940 by 5958. That is unbelievable. And it looks fine. It doesn't look too sharp or too over-processed. Let's go ahead and export that. Finally, the day has come, dash ice cave. <laughs> exporting one of one. She gone. Let's take a look at that. So that is the new upscale extension in Luminar Neo. Now they've got some other extensions, focus stacking. Focus stacking basically is layers. Think of it like an onion. You're just shooting every layer of that onion so it's all in focus. Then you're merging all those photos together so that the whole thing is sharp. It can be very tedious to do manually. Luminar Neo are obviously adding that to the tool basket now where it says here you can drag two to a hundred photos here to start. Drag them in here, done. HDR merge, same thing. If you're gonna take a shot underexposed, a little bit less underexposed, a little overexposed, it's gonna merge all of those together for you and give you that HDR shot. I am not a huge fan of HDR. I feel like it was a big fad in 2008, you know, mostly popular in real estate photos to this day. Let's go back to catalog here. We'll choose this shot of me in Iceland at the Black Sand Beach. Now this was shot very late at night. So if we zoom in, you can see all this noise that's in the frame. One of the new extensions is called Noiseless. Go figure. Click on here. By the way, if you wanna download these extensions, you can hit extras up at the top. That's gonna to open a new little box and you can install all the different types of extensions that are available. So Noiseless, it gives you a suggestion. So it's saying right now, it's probably looking at all the noise in here. We advise that you use the high adjustment for this image. Okay, so you just click high. It does its thing, does its magic. Oh wow, actually, 
was way faster than I thought. The noise is completely gone. It might have smoothed it a little too much for me, so I'm gonna back off that entire edit so we can see again all the noise. I'm gonna go middle for this one just to see if, it, if it's a little less obvious because I don't think the noise necessarily looked bad in this photo. That gets rid of it almost entirely. That's amazing. What else do we got here? I wanna see a super sharp. There are times, obviously, I'm not perfect. I have been shooting for 20 years as of next year. I still miss focus. There are still some times where, for whatever reason, you just, you almost, you almost got it. I had the camera set wrong. I snapped a photo. I liked it, but it wasn't sharp enough. As you can see from this image here, the stream of espresso. It looks good from afar, but it's not sharp. Coming over to super sharp, let's start with high. I just want to send it to see what these look like at the absolute max. I also appreciate the animation that's played while it's happening because it gives me something to look at and I feel myself staring into the soul of the screen. That's done, let's zoom in. Take a look at this. I'm gonna hide it with the little eyeball feature here. Quick preview, if I turn it off, that's before, that's after. So it did definitely sharpen it up. I don't think it snapped it into focus like it would had I actually nailed the focus, but for small mistakes and small errors, I do think that works pretty well. Now let's let's really put it to the test with a Formula One car. So here's Lance Stroll ripping at the Montreal GP. You can see zooming into this photo. I missed focus, but not by a lot. Uh, now, to be fair, I missed focus because these cars are going 350 kilometers an hour in the rain, my first time shooting F1. It's hard, it is not an easy task. I like to pick a few points before I do something so that I can come back and check out those points once I've applied the filter. Aston Martin, obviously at the bottom here, is out of focus. You can see it almost looks like it's ghosted. It's written twice. My hypothesis is that Super Sharp is gonna mess that text up. Let's, let's run Super Sharp on, let's run it on low, see what happens. dive in. Zooming in here, did it mess up? Okay, let's take a look at the Aston Martin text. Looks a little jacked, but the helmet and the halo of the car do look sharper, but it looks like it's kind of messed up some of the text, albeit it's still readable. Let's go ahead and hide the sharpen now. That's before, that's after. It definitely worked. It definitely took motion blur and made it sharp. Now, if we were to back off that and go high, I wanna see what happens. So high for me, that's before, that's after. It's definitely snapping that into focus. Look at the Bombardier, Crypto.com, beforehand and after, it's definitely, definitely sharper. So if I back that off again, we let's split the difference. Let's choose the middle section. I just had like a massive latte downstairs and I can feel, I can feel the blood moving through my body. That's when you know, <laughs> that's when you know you have a problem. All right, let's zoom in on this. This is medium. Again, let's hide that sharpen and unhide. I will admit it is jacking some of the text, not all of it. This brand down here looks fine. I can still make out the Aston Martin logo. All of those beforehand were blurry. Now they're not, especially look at his number 18. Blurry before, not blurry now. I wish that was Sebastian Vettel and that was number five but you know, we get what we get. The next little extension is called Magic Light. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of this one. It appears to add more of like a flare and a glow and a halo and a bit of an ambiance to photos that already have a light or headlights or a glow or a street lamp or something in the frame already. So this was a shot again from Iceland right after we shot the, uh, the noisy one that we made clear here. I bring up Magic Light. You'll notice this one's just a bunch of sliders. So if I up the intensity, you'll see what it's doing. So for the sake of, of this demonstration, let's just ramp it to the max, because then you can change the size of the glow in that photo. You can change the beam width. You can change the style of glow, how much it's glowing, how clear that glow is. If you want it more hazy, which I think looks better, that just looks insane. Bringing that intensity all the way down. You're gonna want to zoom out for this one. That's with nothing. It is pretty cool to be able to add. I think you want a bigger, fatter glow on this. I think maybe something like that. So if you were to go before and after, before, after, it's cool. It's a cool little subtlety. So this particular one, obviously using it sparingly, I feel gives the photo a little bit more of a filmic look. I should also mention that within each extension, you have the ability to mask whatever you want. So if you only want the stream of espresso to be sharp, you can mask 
mask out everything else so that it's not also sharpened, just the target area is sharpened. Or if you want only a specific section of the photo to be denoised, like the sky, you can mask that so just that section is denoised. So those are some new extensions that are brought to you by Luminar Neo. What's cool about the software is they're constantly updating and adding new little features like this that just help speed up the editing process because it's pretty amazing what they're able to pull off with software here that would have typically taken quite a long time to do manually somewhere else. None of this existed when I started photography. Some of this didn't even exist last year. And as you can see, when you click extras, they've got more coming, it's not gonna end there. I think that's really, really cool to see those things constantly being updated and added to your software that just benefits you. So thanks Luminar for fixing my mistakes. So to check out Luminar for yourself, hit the link in the description below. Not only does it work for people like myself that have been shooting for 20 years, but if you're just starting your journey into photography, you're able to pull off a lot of impressive moves and skills within this software that that's, it literally took me 20 years to learn. So they make it very easy, it's very intuitive to use, which is nice when you're starting a new hobby or starting something new, because there's, there's a lot of overwhelming information that you take in all at once. This is a great starting point, and it's a great product for fixing your mistakes, five years later, as a photographer that's been shooting for 20 years. What does that say about me? And it just goes to show you, like, that's where software is now. Just think about what's gonna be happening in five years from now. That's a good question, actually. What do you think this software will be doing five years from now? Leave your comments below. I'd love to know what you think. AI is editing photos. AI is generating photos. <laughs> it's just everything's, everything's AI. We're all gonna die. See you in the next one.